Hey everybody, great to see you again. Thanks for checking out this week's newsletter. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I built this thing behind me, kind of step-by-step, -step, break down the major highlights here. And if you want some guidelines just for getting started and how I suggest learning from this thing, I've got some suggestions below. Let's hop right into it. Look at each row and understand what that row actually represents. In this case, each row represents a single sale made to a single customer at a single point in time. Yours might be different. It might be all the sales for a month for a particular product category. You gotta understand that first because it's gonna affect everything else you do. So for me, I got this CSV file from this cool workflow in Alteryx that's combining a couple of different data sources and cleaning them up. So if I see an error, I'm gonna fix it in my workflow here so I don't have to do it manually every single time in my export. Next, we're gonna make some pivot tables. Pivot tables are going to be the building block of everything we do. If you don't know how to do this, there are a million free tutorials online. You can learn it in less than an hour. It's one of the most useful and valuable skills you can have in Excel. Basic premise here though, insert tab, hit pivot table, type in your memorable name you gave your earlier table. Over here in your pivot table fields, you're gonna drop in the data you want summarized. Each pivot table we add is answering a question. What are our monthly sales look like over the last two years? What does this year's sales look like compared to last year's sales? Who are my five biggest customers? What are my overall sales across all time? How many unique customers do I have every single month? Etc. Etc. If you are learning pivot tables for the first time, the easiest way to learn them is to try to answer questions from your source data using a pivot table. Now for the actual content of our dashboards, we're going to have charts and metrics. Our charts are created by clicking into our table, going to the insert tab and hitting pivot chart. We then grab our pivot chart, go to the design tab and change it to whatever chart type we wanna use. We're gonna do this across every single one of our pivot tables. And we're also gonna think about what data we need to pull out of our tables for our text references later. I'll explain why in a sec, but think about each of the metrics that's important and put it right up top. In this case, I wanted the most recent month's sales. So I did a lookup function that goes down the column, grabs the last value, puts it right up here in the cell. For this number of clients, I wanted the grand total. So I took the same equation, a lookup function going down and grab the last value. In this case, it's always gonna be the grand total because that goes at the bottom. So you'll notice we have one sheet that has all of our data in it, another sheet where we're doing our pivot tables and all of our data processing. And we're gonna add a final sheet where we actually do our dashboard. Couple things to keep in mind here. You can get rid of your grid lines or just give a fill color to all of your cells by hitting command A and giving a fill color. In this case, it's a slightly off white. Now, starting at 100% zoom, we're gonna start dropping in shapes that are gonna block out each of the sections of our dashboard. Quick tip, keep these all to the right of column A so that you can use column A as a way of adjusting the padding on the left side of your screen. All of your shapes options live under the insert tab. We got all sorts of great stuff in here, okay? I'm primarily using rounded rectangles, but you can use other shapes too. You style them over here in the format shape pane. You have lots of options for fill colors and lines. You can add shadows, effects, everything right here. What I need to do next is block out what I'm gonna call cards. Cards are each little grouping of data or content relating to a particular topic. These are all rounded rectangles. I just dropped them in the exact same way I showed you before. There's only two little different series here. One, I've given these all a little drop shadow under this little section here where you have a drop shadow option. And I've added these two colored areas using a gradient fill going from a sort of medium dark blue to a slightly lighter blue. If you're struggling with gradients, the best tip I can give you is use colors that aren't too different from each other. You want your gradients to be subtle, not super bright and bold most of the time. Next, I'm gonna drop in my text. Under the insert tab, you have a text box option. You click and drag to drop your text in. You style this just like any other text, but make sure to remove your fill and your line so that it's transparent and you're just working with the text itself. Fonts work just the way they do. Anywhere else in Excel, you edit them up here using all of your standard font controls. If you're wondering, this is all Calibri, just some of it's bold and in different colors. When you need your text box to be a number that updates with your data, what you're gonna do is just click the text box, go to the formula bar, hit equals, and then click on the cell you want and hit enter. That is gonna link this text box to that cell. Anytime the cell updates, the text box updates. And the reason we took all of these metrics out of our pivot table earlier is because you can only point a text box at a cell. You can't point it at a value in a pivot table. 
Next, we're going to drop in all of our pivot charts, get them formatted, and get them sized right now. I can't show you how to make every single pivot chart here in the 10 minutes we have here on TikTok, but I'm going to hit you with the highlights here. Every single element in a chart in Excel has tons of customization features. If you got a line chart, you can format the line color, you can format the markers, you can format everything separately, you can add effects. There's tons of options. Bar charts, you can do the same thing. In a lot of these, I've just used a gradient fill at zero degrees so it goes across. And then in this case, added a little drop shadow to give it some depth. I have whole videos on how to make this type of chart and many of the other charts you see here. So if you wanna go deeper, you can check those out and I explain the whole process. But when you're starting from scratch, I just say this. Insert tab, click pivot chart to drop your pivot chart in. Head to the design tab and select the chart type that you actually want. Remove any elements you don't want, any labels, that sort of thing. Remove your fill, remove your line. Those are gonna take out the background. Cut it, paste it over wherever you want it. Adjust your colors or your fills for all of your series. If you need to add labels or anything like that, go to the design tab and do it under add chart element. And always make sure under the format data series tab to check out this far right option to see what you can customize. A lot of times there's stuff in here you might not know about. Great ways to just make your chart feel a little more dialed in. And if you're like me and you like your page nice and organized, you can drop in little gradients like this. This is just a rectangle with a gradient fill from a dark blue that's mostly transparent to a completely transparent blue. And these are just used to break up the page, but you can do this however you want. We've only got two more things left in here. First is inserting a slicer and timeline. You do that by clicking into your pivot tables under the insert tab, hitting slicer and timeline. And then this is very important. Once you've added them, you need to right click, hit report connections, and make sure all of the pivot tables you want it connected to are connected so that it will filter everything, not just the one pivot table you started with. The only other thing on here is this nav. All we've done here is added in text, right clicked it, gone to hyperlink, add hyperlink, and then linked it to a different sheet in our workbook. And when you put all that together, you can get these really beautiful dashboards. You don't have to make yours look exactly like this but just having some of these skills will go a long way and help you improve your designs in general. I'm gonna be sending a copy of this out for free on the newsletter, so you can snag it there if you want it. There's a link on my profile for it. Thank you so much to Alteryx for making this all possible. They essentially let me make a whole cool complex template to send out for free to the community. I can't think of a better brand partnership than that, so thank you all. And I hope you all are having a good one wherever you are out in the world. Bye for now. Gummy says bye too. See you soon.